Hi, this is a tutorial series where I teach you how to make a puzzle game that uses the camera. This whole project is done using only vanilla JavaScript and HTML canvas. And a small part of it, this one here, is done using PHP and MySQL to save and load scores from the database. The game works on desktop computers, but also on mobile devices like phones and tablets. By following this series, you'll learn many useful things that you can later apply in other projects. Today we'll start with part one, how to access the camera and show it on the canvas. I'll demonstrate using my webcam, but I'll also show you how to handle the phone camera as well. Let's begin. We begin by writing the HTML page. In the header, we give the page a title. This will change what we see here in the browser tab. And we'll also link the two external files one for the JavaScript and another for the CSS. These files are just empty for now. Then the body part of our document will be really simple for now. We just run a function called main when the page loads. And add the canvas element here, which is what we'll primarily use to build the game. It will be a canvas app. If we refresh the page now, we see the tab shows the correct title. And we also get an error here in the console. If you don't see the console in your browser, try pressing F12. It's the shortcut for the developer tools in most browsers. I'm using Google Chrome. I think it has the most useful tools, but it's really just a personal preference. Any one of them will work just fine. Now, the error says that this main function is missing. So let's move to our JavaScript file and implement it. For now, I'll just make it output the string main into the console to test if it works. And it does. It's very good to debug like this whenever you make a change. Otherwise, errors pile up and it can be very confusing to deal with many of them at once. But now let's see how to access the camera. We'll use a promise to get access to our media devices. We're only interested in the video coming from the camera, and we specify that here. What happens now is that the browser will ask the player for permission to use the camera. When they give it, the code will go here, where we define a callback function in which we have access to the camera signal. If the player doesn't allow the camera, or there is some other error, we will catch it and show it on screen. When everything works out, we initialize a video object. We'll use a global variable for this, and I will write these in capital letters to make it clear when a variable is global or not in the code. We next create the video element, initialize it to the signal coming from the camera, and play it. When video data is available, we can start updating it on the canvas. This update canvas function is what we will implement next, but first let's also define the canvas here globally and add a reference to the canvas context object as well. We initialize the canvas with the one defined in the HTML page previously. This 2D context of the canvas provides all drawing methods we will need to build the game. Our canvas will fill the entire window. Now, the update canvas function needs to draw the video onto the canvas, so we will use the draw image method of the canvas context to do just that. We also need to specify here that we want to start drawing from the top left corner, which has 0, 0 coordinates. Now, when I refresh, something happens. It shows the image coming from my camera. My camera is just pointed at the wall here at the moment. But it doesn't pick up any movement just yet. We need to update the canvas many times per second to see this happen, and we'll use the request animation frame method to make it work. This method will call the function recursively many times per second, and it will try to update 60 times per second if the computer is fast enough. Now we get a live image. 
Let me just put Mr. Chibi-san here to make it less boring. Have you ever used the camera in any of your projects? Let me know in the comments below. Now, you'll notice a white border here. It's a bit strange because we said we want to draw the video at 0, 0, but the body element has some default margin, and that's what we are actually seeing. We'll remove that by going to our CSS file and changing the style of the body element by setting the margin to 0. Better now, but we still get these scroll bars here, which are not really necessary. So I'll remove them by setting overflow to hidden. Now the scroll bars are gone, but the video actually goes outside the screen. We don't want that. And we need to keep in mind that in general, there are many webcams or phone cameras out there with different resolutions, aspect ratios, and so on. So we need a way to resize the video so that it fits in the middle of the screen, preferably with some space around it so that we have enough room to move the pieces later. We'll use this scaler to specify how much of the screen space will be used by the image. And I will also keep track of other related information in this size variable. We update these values here when metadata about the video is available. First, we use a helper variable to find out the minimum ratio between the screen size and the video size. And then we set the size attributes accordingly. Note that here one of these things will simplify so we properly preserve the aspect ratio and nothing gets stretched. For the x and y coordinates, we start off in the middle of the screen and go just half the width towards the left and half the height towards the top. Then, to actually affect the image, we must update the draw image method here. This method can be called with a different number of arguments. Before, we just specified the top left corner, but now we also add the width and the height. OK, it works. We now see the entire image coming from the camera. Before, it was slightly cropped on the right. We also get this 80% margin. And if we change the value here, we get a different sized margin instead. We can also check to see how the application looks on different sized screens by pressing this button. We can even select some specific device from this list. But every time we change something, we need to refresh the page to see it happen. Looks good. How about in landscape mode? Need to refresh again. We could actually make this resizing happen automatically by using an event listener for the window resize. We then need to move this code in the callback function. And also need to call this function here so that the code executes as before. And I should also move these lines here too. In this way, the canvas will resize as well, not just the camera stream. OK, let's see. If we change the orientation, yes, it works. No matter what the screen size, we will get the proper fitting this time. But even more important is that it will work regardless of the size and aspect ratio your camera outputs. I'll demonstrate this by forcing my webcam to output a specific size. Note that not all webcams support resizing in this way, and it may not work for you, but you can try. You can see it works just fine with the square aspect ratio. Let's try a vertical aspect ratio next. Okay, works just fine. 
I will remove these extra parameters now, because we want to see the entire video coming from the camera. This was just an experiment. And I will actually comment out this event listener, because we don't really need this functionality inside the app. Users are not expected to resize the screen like this. I made it to demonstrate better how things work, and avoid refreshing all the time. Plus, you may need it in one of your projects. Okay, that's it for today. Please like this video if you learned something useful. In the next part, I'll teach you how to cut the image into pieces like this.